Yo, what's good? Welcome back to another DIY prepping video. In this one, we're gonna prep for the Black Means Sashiko Denim. Lately, I've been wanting to get back into patchwork stuff, but at the same time, really want to work with my sewing machine, darning stitches and all that stuff. So I'd say this is a pretty good opportunity for me to like, you know, satisfy those needs. But I'll put them on screen right now. They look like a lot of work, <laughs> a lot, a lot of work, but it's definitely doable. Uh, the biggest issue I guess I'd say for them looking at the pictures is just like the zipper fly area. When I put the zipper fly back together for the hoggy dem that I did, the stitches were not, they look really bad. <laughs> but it looks like it will be covered anyways from all the patches and all the darning and stuff like that. So I'm sure it wouldn't matter. But let's start prepping, see what we gotta do to make these pants. So to my phone, um, so yeah, right off the back you can see there's a lot of stuff you gotta do. Like sashiko stitching on the bottom, a bunch of horizontal ones, a bunch of like weaved like honeycomb looking uh, like chain linked sashiko stitches. And of course at the top, a bunch of patches with darning to keep them in place. Now let's start off with the bottom half of the pants first. Um, it's actually pretty simple to do, but you can see there's a lot of it and have long legs, so it will be really tedious. But I mean, for the most part, it's pretty straightforward. Use white chalk pencil, draw on the designs, and then just, you know, hand sew it in following that line that I made. That's have a pretty Good amount of hours, you know, doing this hand sewing stuff. But for those who don't have that much experience with it, I think the biggest issue is that when you're hand sewing stuff like this, you may not remember to, you know, keep the fabric flat because when you're hand sewing it and you're pulling the thread through, it can scrunch it up. And if you keep doing that and then you finish off the knot, it's gonna be stuck like that unless you undo it. So when hand sewing this, especially like this chain part, I'd say, make sure to not scrunch up the base layer denim because one, it won't look even and flush and then two, it's gonna make your pants smaller. So at the end of this, one pan leg is gonna fit skinnier than the other, it's not gonna be comfortable. So you have to bear in mind to make sure to not scrunch up the base layer denim. Now it also looks like at the bottom that the backside doesn't go all the way to the inseam. Yeah, it goes to the outseam, but not to the inseam. Uh, maybe that's preference, let's see how the backside looks like. Okay, so the backside is just one continuous stitch going downwards. And it looks like also on the front side that the honeycomb design is covering the knee area. So it starts at the top of the knee and ends at the bottom of the knee. Now the transition from the sashiko stitching to the patchwork at the top part, it looks like it was made with two different panels. And if I were to try to recreate these with the pants I plan to use, that would decrease the length of them by about like an inch or so. And I can't really afford to do that because the pants are a size 32 and I'm a size 33 length. <laughs> so uh, it's kind of cutting it close already. So I might not do that. I might just straight up transition from the patchwork and leave like some kind of straight line guideline uh, or marking uh, to indicate where that cutoff is going to be and then transition into the hand sewing uh, portion of the pants. Now my next question for myself is should I deconstruct the entire pant? Uh, by that I mean do I have to take apart all four panels like you know make them all separate individual pieces or can I leave, you know, the front two together and the back two together and only separate the outseam and the inseam? Because obviously the less you deconstruct the pants, the more time you'll save, the less time you have to worry about putting the stuff back together. But at the same time, if you deconstruct all the pieces of the pants, it's a lot easier to work with when it comes to like hand sewing and using your sewing machine, easier access stuff like that. Zooming into the back side at the butt area, I'm pretty sure they worked on each panel individually because you can see the transition from the right panel to the left panel. But for me, I think I will keep the back two connected at the middle seam at the butt area. Actually, maybe not. Yeah, I'm gonna separate all four panels, I think. Cause I mean, if you go to the front side, you can see that over the zipper fly flap, there's also patchwork and darning there as well. And it's impossible to sew like that with a sewing machine without getting in the way of the zipper fly. So I'd have to remove the zipper fly so I can access that portion of the pants and then reattach it is what it is, you know? And there's also some stitches on the waistband too. So I have to remove that too. Now, another thing also is that I might have to remove the hand pockets because if I don't, I'm gonna risk sewing over it and then it won't be usable anymore. Now for the patches, what do we have to use to recreate this stuff? So first off, especially when it comes to making things that look more aged and used, you wanna make sure that the base layer, you know, looks aged and it looks used. You don't wanna use jeans from like Walmart where they have no fades, there's no wear on them. Now if you are to recreate that aged faded look somehow, onto those jeans and you know, by all means. So I am gonna be using some Levi's that I thrifted. These are some Levi's 541s, size 33, 32. Now they're not as aged looking as these, but I mean, they do definitely have some fades. Even some natural distress things here 
on the left hand pocket, even on the right pocket too. And on the back side, you can really see the fading there too. So I think these are a perfect pair to use for this DIY. Now for all of these patches here, it looks like they left the edges of these patches raw. They just cut out a bunch of small square and rectangular pieces and then attach them together. Another thing you have to keep in mind is that the patches don't cover the entire pants, the entire base layer. You can still see a lot of the surface of the base layer pants, which is why I think it's really important to make sure that the base layer has some fading on them. Otherwise, it might look a little disconnected from the stuff you're trying to add onto them. So there are some distressings that I have to add onto the base layer. All the threads are intact. So I have to resist the temptation to just like speed through the distressing process because I have to maintain um, a lot of the threads. Now for all the fabrics we have to use, the majority of it just looks like denim. Um, I was gonna say like this stripe one kind of looks like something from like a button up, but I assume that that material may be too thin for this. But I know that I do have a lot of excess um, denim, you know, cutouts or whatever from previous DIYs that I can use for this. I just have to make sure that I kind of keep the colors of them, nothing too contrasting, you know, like adding in some kind of like purple fabric all of a sudden. I want to make it somewhat in the shade of like indigo and blue and stuff. Now for the thread that we have to use, Obviously it's going to be white. Maybe it'd look better if I had like some kind of cream for the top stitch and then just probably just use like a white for the bobbin thread. But I think for now I'll just settle with white um, on the top as well as the bobbin. And then, you know, maybe I'll like leave it outside for a couple of weeks and then that'll add in some like natural sun fading to them. But that's pretty much it for this prepping process. Seems pretty simple enough to do, especially in comparison to like the Balenciaga ones. But I'm going in to this project with, you know, a pretty decent amount of experience when it comes to like sashiko stitching, patchwork, uh, hand sewing, stuff like that. So you can have to like deconstruct and reconstruct pants. So I guess that's just the experience talking. I'd recommend if you guys are, you know, feeling intimidated to try out stuff like this, honestly, just like look at it, research it, try to like figure out in your head how things are made, how things are done, and then just like go for it try to experiment oh i think this method might work try it out and if it doesn't try another method and if that doesn't work you know yeah i think what's really good about this specific diy project is that it's okay if you make mistakes if anything just make mistakes at the top part of the pants i'm sure it'll, like it'll, you'll find a way to like incorporate it to make it look like it's like part of the actual design but anyways i hope you guys found this video somewhat you know insightful or helpful in any way. If you want to keep up to date with the things that I'm working on, like this project, follow me on my Instagram at Julius Nathan. I usually post updates on my story. Join my Discord to meet really chill people who are also into this DIYing stuff. Link to that in the description down below. And I'll see you guys in the next one. I'll probably make this into like a vlog series like I did with the Balenciagas. I'm out. Peace.